Okay, Tartaglia's famous formula. It's usually known as Cardano's formula, or Cardan's formula, but even Cardan gives much of the credit to Tartaglia. So I just got into the habit of calling it Tartaglia's formula. It's much, it's a more beautiful name if nothing else, but you should also be credited with discovering Tartaglia's formula. It has to do with solving the cubic. And you won't argue with me that I can take the leading coefficient to be 1, because you can always cancel by the, you can always divide through by the leading coefficient. So for us, the cubic equation will be x cubed And then, we'll do another simplification, which is always done. It's not really necessary, but if you can decrease the number of degrees of freedom, it's always possible. And what it's always, if you can decrease the number of degrees of freedom, it's a positive thing. Just reduces complexity. And it turns out that you can always eliminate the next term. And you do it by simple substitution. And that substitution, I'll use the letter C instead of Y, equals X minus A divided by 3. So it's just this simple shift. This simple shift will eliminate this term. It will replace X with Z. Actually, I'm sorry, X equals Z minus A over 3. Z, X is Z minus A over 3. So z is x plus a over 3. That's the substitution. And you will see, I think we should just do it just as a, as a way of getting our feet wet with al algebraic computation, that this actually works and eliminates this term. So let's plug it in. For x cubed, I'll just multiply things out. I'll skip the intermediate step. For x cubed, it is this thing cubed. So I will have, you guys should, you know that binomial formula, right? minus, because b is negative and it appears linearly in the second term, minus, and a over 3 cancels the 3, the 1 over 3 cancels the 3, so we just have Okay, so that's the, that's, the, that's the whole goal, is that the z squared term cancels. So you can see that this is not a very sophisticated thing, but a very helpful convenience. And if you're going to do this for high degree polynomials, obviously you'll want to do a minus, I'm sorry, z minus a over n, where n is the degree of the polynomial. It'll likewise succeed at canceling this, this term. And so what we have left is a cubic term, a linear term, and a constant term. So any, any cubic equation with this substitution, I'm going to erase this, can be written in the form x cubed plus px plus cubed. That's a common way to write it. And the solution is usually stated in terms of these two coefficients. So I thought I'd entertain you by deriving it. Not the way Tartaglia did it, but the way Euler did it when he presented it. And of course, by the time he was presenting it, he knew what the answer looked like, and so he invented a derivation that would be, he was looking for something that would be as simple as possible and as elegant as possible. He wasn't showing you how he would have done it if he had to discover it. So he already knew what the solution was look like, what, what the solution looked like, and presented a way of doing it the fastest and most elegant way. And keep in mind, and it's something interesting about Tartaglia's formula, to which I don't know the answer yet, but we'll explore it together, that we're only after one root. We don't need all three. Because as soon as we get one root, We'll factor it out, we'll be left with a quadratic, and we can use the quadratic formula for it. So we only have to find one root, and that's reflected in this logic here. So here's how, here's what he said. So that's the last thing I'll do today, and then tomorrow we'll explore this formula, and we'll discover how it gave birth 
two complex numbers. So maybe that will be the most exciting moment. But again, just out of getting our feet wet, and maybe out of <laughs> respect for doing the hard work, let's actually derive the formula. And then I think, well, I'll say that later. Okay, so here's Euler's solution. He said, let's present the solution as the sum of two cubes, cubic roots. A cubic root of R plus the cubic root of S. So obviously he knew that the solution kind of looks like this. Okay, and then he said, let's cube both sides. You guys do it with me. It's using that formula. It's cubing a sum. So x cubed equals, well, r, because it's this cube, r plus 3 times this squared and this. So it's cubic root of r squared s plus 3 times this times this squared. So it's plus 3 times cubic root of r s squared plus this guy cubed, so plus s. Okay, great. Now let's group them together, this and this. Let's factor out from this, let's factor out 3 times the cubic root of r s, leaving one r in the first term and one s in the circuit in the second term. So we have Okay, so far so good, and then notice, this is kind of the breakthrough, that this is x again. That's what x is. So, I'm just going to put x for that. So we have 3. So that's what x cubed equals. But we're trying to solve this equation, so what we've done so far has nothing to do with solving the equation. We just explored what would happen if x was the sum of two cube roots. That's all we did. So the equation hasn't factored into our calculation yet, but it will now, because from the equation, x cubed is minus px, minus px, minus, well, I'm looking up there, minus px minus q. So he said, all of this will work together if we make this equal to minus p, and we make this equal to minus q. And then things will work. But this is almost solving the problem because look, from this we know the sum of two numbers and we know their product. And when you know the sum and the product of two numbers, then you know that there's the solutions of a quadratic equation. So we'll just have to solve the quadratic equation. So here's what we know. We know that r plus s equals minus q. It's not that we know that. But we're, we're going to choose r and s such that r plus s equals minus q. Equals minus q. And, well, I'm just going to find r s. And r s equals minus p divided by 3 cubed. So it's minus p cubed. So r s equals minus p cubed over 27. And the problem is essentially solved. Because from this, we know that R and S must satisfy the quadratic equation. So I'll use the, what letter have I not used yet? Y. Y squared. The second coefficient, the linear coefficient, is minus the sum of the two variables. So plus QY. Because that is minus their sum. Plus the product. So now solving this equation, we find that y equals minus q plus or minus square root of q squared minus 4ac, so plus 4 times this, divided by 2a, which is divided by 2. And that's what r and s can be. The r and s are the two roots of this equation. So it's r comma s. Okay? And we know that x is the, is the sum of the cube roots 
of these two quantities. And again, remember, it's just one solution to the cubic. So let me write it here. Equals cubic root. It's usually written like this. The two q q is divided through by two, and then the one half is brought inside the square root. So it becomes minus q over two plus the square root. You see, I learned from last time not to complete the square root until I'm done with the contents. Okay, so q squared over four plus p cubed over 27. Okay, that's one term. And the other term has the same sort of thing with a minus sign. Plus And now we have just the equation and its solution. And it's beautiful. It's as complicated as you would imagine it, it would need to be to have taken so long to be discovered. But I also think it's a little bit of a momentous occasion in European history because this is just me imagining things. The psychological effect of this. Europeans, for at this point, 1,500 years, closer to 2,000 years, were living in the shadow of the Greek civilization. And it was easy to believe that Greeks had discovered all there is was to discover. And this may have been the first step that gave rise to the belief that there is a lot more to be discovered, and that there is a lot more to be given to mathematics and science. You know, it's like you imagine a kid who is, a, who is pretty good at basketball, but maybe not that great, by NBA standards goes to a small school and becomes a star, but still not quite sure that he can make it in the NBA, and then there is maybe one occasion that convinces the kid that, gee, maybe I am cut out for the NBA. You know, it's that belief that makes all the difference in the world. And maybe this was the first event you can point to of modern European science going beyond, a step beyond what the Greeks did.